What does MP Rotator stand for? And the three most commonly asked questions about MP Rotators in this video. I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and you're watching Sprinkler TV. Welcome back, my friends. I'm joined by Kevin Battistoni with Hunter Industries. Say hello, Kevin. How's it going, everyone? And where are you and what exactly do you do for Hunter Industries? Uh, so I am based in the western suburbs of the Chicagoland area. And I my title is uh, the Midwest Sales Manager for Hunter Industries. I cover um, mid our professional channel, so calling primarily on our distributor partners. Wholesale distribution is our primary outlet today. And the contractors that actually perform the installation work. Prior to that, I spent a decade in distribution. And before that, I was in the shovel on the field, um, born into four generations of irrigation contractors. So awesome. we're Great. getting real nerdy today, Andy. You got you got two nerds today. Perfect. So <laughs> MP Rotators, very popular product. The professional industry knows it, I would say, mostly fairly well. Like the professional industry knows MP sure. Rotators. And we get a lot of questions at Sprinkler Supply Store from homeowners, DIY, um, people using them on their own that don't do sprinkler and are not running a sprinkler business for a living. And the first question that we always get is what exactly does the MP and MP rotator stand for? Uh, so the MP and MP rotator stands for matched precipitation, right? And, per and here in the world of irrigation, we measure water being laid down in inches per hour. And that's our precipitation rate. Now we have rotary sprinkler heads that cover a larger surface area and oscillate or rotate, if you will, and then short radius stuff that does the opposite. And those products are on polar opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of inches per hour in an application rate. Um, so match precipitation rate with the MPs, as long as you're laying them out in a head to head coverage scenario, there is a flow throttle inside of the product that assures that it's four tenths of an inch per hour throughout. So it takes a lot of the guessing work out. Okay, so let us um, let me try to dig in a little bit more, add some clarity. So mm -hmm. are, why are all sprinklers not matched precipitation rate? You know, why, what's unique about this or why aren't others all matched precip? Sure. So um, we'll first talk in the world of rotors, right? Okay. So your, your rotary sprinkler heads, which cover a larger surface area, when you purchase it, it comes with a rack of nozzles and the nozzles are going to cover different distances and have different application rates. So if I'm running three sprinkler heads on a zones, meaning they all come on simultaneously, mm -hmm. if their area of coverage fluctuates, like I have one covering 180 degrees and then the one right next to it covering 360, I would need twice the volume of water in the one that's doing 360 in order to have matched application rate. So there is work to be done in the field by the professional when they install it to ensure that we are matching. And that's where the MP, it's as if the entire rack of nozzles is built into it. And every time you adjust the distance or the area of coverage, the flow throttle adjusts to maintain the same application rate. Got it. Got it. And we, and, and I've come across this. So if you're watching this video and you have rotors or if you have a large span of turf area and you do have rotors, there's probably a 50% chance that the rotor that's only turning a quarter turn and the rotor that's turning a full turn have the very same nozzle in it, which means that one in the quarter in the corner is putting down four times as much water because it goes back and forth four times every time the one in this middle spins around in a 360. And so I think that's what Kevin means by matched precipitation 100%. rate with this MP rotator, that full circle is has the same application rate as the quarter MP rotator. So I -E correct MP matched precipitation. Okay, cool. Well, that leads in now that we're talking about zones and sprinklers and number of sprinklers that actually leads into question number two, which is how many MP rotators can you put on a zone? Oh, that's a great question. Um, and it's going to be site specific, right? But I'll give you the, some of the science behind it. to so just give you a, a little bit of um, it's a, it's a, you have two variables in irrigation, right? You have pressure, so there are pressure requirements to make product work 
appropriately with the MP rotator, the minimal operating pressure is 25 pounds of pressure at the head. And then the other variable is volume. And we measure that in gallons per minute. So each product that you use, whether it be a rotary sprinkler head or an MP rotator is going to consume a certain amount of volume based upon the pressure that it's set at. So to give you an idea, a 12 half, so an MP 1000 with 30 pounds of pressure at the base of the head is going to throw water 12 feet. And if we set it to 180 degrees, it's going to utilize 0.32 gallons per minute. All right. Okay. Um, so one inch water line on an, irrig on an irrigation system, um, certainly you can get a lot more than 0.32 inches per hour. Um, even off a garden hose, um, I have fairly low pressure. I don't have any issues running like MP 2000s, two or three on a zone really well. I mean, it, again, the thing about the MP is it's using a lot less water. Um, so not to say that you couldn't run, you know, 10 or 20 of them. It, it, it is a variable, but no entry level PSI 25 and then consumption rate will be available based upon your arc and radius. You look at that consumption rate, just make sure you don't exceed what you have available. Right. So let's say... What would the what would you say the average MP rotator gallons per minute is? You mentioned that the twelve foot half is 0.3 gallons per minute. Would it safe to would, is it safe to say that the average might be 0 0.4, 0 0.5 gallons per minute? You know, I'm going to go to the MP two thousand. Okay? okay, and the MP two thousand is if you've give, if you're giving it forty psi at the base of the head, it's going to throw about twenty feet, and we can reduce that down. Uh, it by 25%. So the, the 2000 is our most popular. Um, and I would say as a budgetary number with that, well, the 90 degree to 210 degree, depending on how much you open it up, that'll change consumption. But just as a rule of thumb, um, I would, I would say, let's just call it like 0.75 to one gallon per minute. That's a little high, well, right? Let's but I always let's like to budget. One. I like one, yeah. one gallon. Per One's minute. good, right? Round up. And if you just, it uses less than one gallon per minute, but if you use that as a safety number, you'll, you'll always be okay. So let's say a one inch, um, connection, you might get 15 gallons a minute, but that's again, a good estimate. Let's just say it's going to be 10 gallons per minute. Yeah. That's a safety number, right? So if, if you have 10 gallons a minute and that's what you mentioned as your supply, 10 gallons a minute, and if one nozzle is one gallon per minute, then it sounds like it would be safe to say you could put 10 MP rotators on a zone if you had 10 gallons per minute. Yes. Now, I agreed in terms of that one half of the equation, the gallons per minute. The vo From the volume side, we check that box and we are good to go. However, we need to take a look at the PSI. Correct. So let's because just if we don't have with with pressure yeah. being you know you need pressure at your source and there's a lot of other math that goes through your your backflow your friction loss calculations all sure. of that um, but if you had let's say 60 pounds of pressure at your house you're probably all right with that yeah. guessing that number of 1 gallon per minute cuz that's conservative so right 10 gallons a minute maybe 10 mp rotators i'm trying to just give somebody a little bit of math because we can't really pick a number we can't say you can put five on a zone because on a big commercial site, maybe you can put 35. On <laughs> no. And, and that's a great point because I mean, it's a low hanging fruit upgrade to improve efficiency on an existing system. And oftentimes what happens because the MPs have to run a longer duration to let, lay down the same amount of water. In some instances, your homeowners are able to now run two zones simultaneously because the GPM, the volume of water that we're using is so much less. And in doing so, that doesn't increase your overall water window, right? right? So we're running the zones twice as long, but if we can run multiple zones at the same time, we stay within the constraints of yep. whatever our water window is. Because if, let's say you retrofitted um, your standard turf rotor over to MP rotators, the gallons per minute is cut in half. And if the gallon per minute is cut in half, generally speaking, then you could run two zones at the same time, where before you could only run one at the same time. So your water window hasn't increased because you're flowing the same amount of water through the pipe, just covering a larger area with it, running it for a longer period of time. You bet. And, and I think the trend we see more frequently where it's much more beneficial to consumers is to change out traditional spray nozzles for MPs. 
Um, not a lot of applications where rotors are pretty darn efficient in terms of their distribution uniformity. Um, you're really splitting hairs between that and an MP. But if you have spray nozzles, you're, you're going to see at least a 30% increase in efficiency without putting a shovel in the ground, right? Just threading one out, threading one on, making the adjustment. Good. Perfect. So let's move on to question number three, and that is how do you adjust an MP rotator? Ah, um, so fun fact, uh, if you're in the irrigation game, you're going to get wet. So number one, the only way you can adjust an MP rotator is while it's running. Okay. Um, that's done with intention because a lawnmower goes over it, zero radius, a uh, little kid plays with it. We didn't want the arc or the radius to be easily adjusted. So when water is flowing through it, you have two adjustments that can be made on an MP rotator. One is the stainless steel collar that you see here. Moving it, it's a left fixed edge. So you would put your left edge at your hardscape. And to increase the arc, and he's got one there for you as well, you could place your fingers on the stainless steel collar and turn it clockwise while it's running to increase your arc, to decrease your arc counterclockwise, okay? In addition to that, there is a tiny little set screw on the top. You can see right there. And that tiny set screw can reduce, as I mentioned earlier, the spray pattern in, ra in radius by as much as 25%. That also can only be achieved while the MP rotator has water flowing through it. How you would do that with your flathead screwdriver or your MP tool, which I'll debut here in a moment, is turning it clockwise. If you turn it three revolutions while it's running, that will bring it back 25%. If you want it to return to full arc or radius, then you would simply turn it counterclockwise. But what three if you revolutions. Turn it further than that, nothing will happen. You're, okay. you're, it'll stop. Even you're not going to damage it either. You could, you know, you could continue to turn it. I don't know why you would, but if you accidentally, if you don't watch this content and you're doing it, you know, you're not going to cause any harm to it. That said, we have come up with a fancy tool called the MP tool. This fits perfectly over that stainless steel collar. So making that adjustment, again, while it's running, a little bit more simplistic. I mean, it's dealer choice, to be honest with you. Um, I always have a, a, a small screwdriver with me, so I don't often use the MP tool. But the nice part about that MP tool is that the slot screwdriver portion, it's tapered. So it actually guides you right onto that thread. So it's very easy when you're making your radius reduction or radius increase adjustment. Okay, so, perfect. So um, You've got that tool. Now, the last question that we get is that, and this is question number four, is can you adjust it without that tool? Yeah, yeah, you, you can, as, as, we, as we just mentioned. That is the uh, tiny, a small slot screwdriver is all that's needed for the radius reduction or increase. And you do not need anything but your hand to adjust the degree of arc. You know, the one I'm holding in my hand is an MP3000 with 40 PSI. It's going to throw 30 feet. I can reel it in by 25% with that set screw. And this will adjust from 90 degrees up to 210. Perfect. And then uh, just be ready to get wet, as you said. 100%. Yeah. In irrigation, we stand behind our work because if we stood in front of it, we would get wet. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks everyone for watching. If we can help you with any of your hunter irrigation needs from valves, controllers, sprinklers, rotors, drips, feel free to reach out. We're happy to help you. You can reach us by phone, chat, email, text message. And until the next Sprinkler Supply Store product overview, happy sprinkling. We'll talk to you then.